The following lesson is from Project Server 2007 All-in-One Learn Smart Video Training. To find out how you can get unlimited access to our entire Learn Smart Video Training library, call 1-800-418-6789. So how do we actually connect to the server? Well, users must be authenticated, and there's one of two ways to do that. The first way, and I would have to say, in my opinion, kind of the preferred way when people are working within an office-type environment is through their simple Windows account. They have to log on to their Windows computer. They can do the same thing to be authenticated either through Project Professional or PWA. If they don't have a Windows account or if they have limited access, then there is a web-based form that can be used as well. It will simply ask them for a username and a password. Using the Windows account simply eliminates that extra step. The Windows accounts can be set to automatically log into the server when you're logging into Windows. I love this feature. One-step login is always better for people, and it limits the need to log into multiple services. The permissions that people have are determined by the user's role as defined by the administrator. So whoever sets all of these accounts up, starting with Active Directory and coming on into the server environment, that's where people will know what permissions they have, and when they log on, those permissions, of course, will be granted. When you log into the server environment, you're going to be welcomed by the Project Center page. And we'll be taking a look at the server page in just a few seconds and what it includes. It really is the gateway to the server itself. So how do we go about creating a proposal? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. Two different methods, really. One is to create a new proposal with all the details in PWA. The second is, if you have Windows SharePoint services, you can create it from an imported SharePoint list. If you are having some collaboration out on the SharePoint site, people were putting in their ideas of how this project should go together, you could build a task list. This task list is what we're talking about importing. As we said, there is the opportunity then to work with workflow. You'd create the proposal in PWA. You'd submit it for somebody to review, and of course those people have to be approved reviewers. The accepted proposals would be then returned to the proposal owner, and they would go ahead and publish it. And if for some reason the reviewer rejected the proposal, then it could go back be changed and resubmitted for review again. In order for all of this workflow stuff to work, remember that you do have to have SharePoint workflows configured. And that again is something for SharePoint, not necessarily something from the project server side. So I think it's obvious, but I always like to sometimes state the obvious, that if we're going to use project web access, we get to that using a web browser. I've simply opened Internet Explorer and I'm going to click up in my address bar and type in the URL for my web server. You do have to know what this is, get it from your server administrator. It's usually going to be an HTTP, could be an HTTPS in some situations if it's a secure connection. Then it will be the name of your project server. Mine is just called project server. Then I'll do a forward slash and I want to go to a specific project site. So this one happens to be called PWA02. I'll press enter. And because I am set up to use my Windows authentication, I was not asked for any more information. You can see on the upper right-hand side of the screen, it says, Welcome Aaron Olson, it already logged me in, based on my Windows credentials. Now, if you've used SharePoint before, this is going to look very familiar to you. It really is the same interface. We have a variety of tabs along the top. In this case, it's fairly simple. We haven't customized it a lot yet. That take me to my home. Along the left-hand side, we have quick access to a lot of links, including work, projects, resources, reporting, approvals, and then down at the bottom, some of the administrative types of things, including personal settings, server settings, and even document libraries. What I'd like to do is go ahead and take you right into the Project Center. It's underneath the Project category. We'll go ahead and click the link. And this is your overview of everything that's on your project server. As we can see, there are a couple of things already going on. There's one called Training Curriculum Development and one called Corporate Business Application Upgrade. It gives us a little bit of information as well as some Gantt charts. What I would like to do is go ahead and start a new proposal, and I can do that from PWA. Because this is SharePoint based, we know that there's a New button. We can simply click New, and we will choose the New Proposal option. This opens up the page. It gives us the opportunity to set a couple of different things. Now up at the top, you'll see that there's a place for work details and summary information. I'm going to start off with just some summary information. I also have the opportunity to either create it completely new or to import that task list from an existing SharePoint list. 
we're going to go ahead and create this one from new. I'm going to give it a name, and it should be something descriptive, because remember, this is part of the enterprise. So a variety of people will be looking at it, and it should be something that they can understand, even if they don't work in your particular department or your particular location. Let's say, for example, that what we're trying to do is create some overall training that needs to be done after we do a new software improvement and rollout. So I'm going to call this departmental. Training Initiative. Hopefully that will be uh, somewhat self-descriptive. We can put in a short description, something like training for all departments after new software rollout. Now as you come down, you'll see some other things that you would expect with any kind of a project. You can designate a start date. The end date will typically be configured by the server once you get this put in. So I'm going to go ahead and set a date a little bit out into the future. I'll use the calendar control, scroll over a couple of months, and we'll choose the second. I also can designate who the owner of the plan is. Like any other kind of file, the owner, of course, has overall control as well as accountability. From this drop-down, you may see a variety of names depending on what's already been set up on your server. I will keep myself as the owner, and I'll scroll down a little more to show you just a couple more options that you do have. If you're working with workflows, that's when the state field becomes appropriate. Is it proposed? Is it approved? Those types of things. I'm not going to be using workflow. I'm also not going to worry about the project exposure at the moment, so I'll just simply click on Save. Once this is saved, it comes up in its own web page, and we have the ability now to work on the details. Remember when we first started this, I told you that we were going to work with the summary information. Now that we've done that, it opens to the detail view, and this is where I can simply enter tasks. I'll go ahead and put in a few, but this is exactly like it would be in any version of project. We're going to enter a task name, mark it as a milestone, put in a duration, and hopefully allow it to automatically calculate the start dates and finish dates. So let's say to work with this, we first need to plan the sessions. And I'll just use my tab key to move over for duration. And we'll say that maybe that's going to take four hours. Part of this planning will be determined by when the software is available. Because remember, this is training on new software. So I might put in something like determine software availability date because I don't want to do my training before we have something to train on. That's not going to take very long. That's probably going to be something like one hour, talking to the IT and the programming people. We'll do just a couple more. Let's see. I then need to determine how many sessions. And we'll make that pretty short as well. And we'll do just one more. We'll reserve some training rooms. And that might also take an hour. Now, I'll do this pretty quickly because you should be familiar with it. But like the rest of project, we need to be able to link these tasks, and we also can outline the list. In order to be able to link tasks, you, of course, need to be able to select them. So I'm going to move over to the left-hand column, give it a click. And you can use all of your usual techniques here, like click, shift, click, to be able to select those. And then you have a link tasks button. What is different about this is that you only see the link icon in the links column. You don't actually see a line like you would in regular project. If you choose to unlink tasks, even if you only select a single task, it will unlink all tasks. You can't do them one at a time. There are some other options that we'll talk about later that are available here, but also know that you can delete a task, and on the far right you can add a new task. But again, unlike the full client for project, you have to add new tasks one at a time. You can't say, I want to highlight five rows and insert five new tasks. When you get this completely finished, you have the option to either save it or save it and publish it. I'm going to go ahead and click Save and Publish. If I just save, it's only visible to me. If I save and publish, even though it's not a project yet, then other people can see it as well.